What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to visualize sorting algorithms in Python. We're going to take something simple like bubble sort or something a little bit more complicated like merge sort and we're going to visualize it using Matplotlib. So the focus is not going to be on the algorithms themselves, uh, but on the visualization on the animation of sorting in Python. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new Python file. We're going to open up CMD and we're going to install, if you don't have it already, Matplotlib and NumPy. Those are the two libraries we're going to need for that. NumPy just to create a list and Matplotlib to visualize the sorting. Uh, we're going to write the sorting algorithms ourselves. If you want to have uh, more information, more content on the algorithms themselves, you can check out my algorithms and data structures tutorial series where I have a part on um, sorting algorithms. And I also have, I think, a specific video on the merge sort algorithm in Python. So what we're going to do first, we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and we're going to import numpy as np and now we're going to do basic bubble sort algorithm so we're going to say list equals np random dot rand int from a range to zero from zero to 100 we're going to generate let's start with 15 numbers for example and then we're going to just say x so the x values are np a range from a range from zero to uh, 15 with a step size of one. Maybe we should have a amount variable here that we're going to set to 15. Then we're going to replace that with amount. We're going to replace that with amount as well. And what we're going to do now is we're going to just say uh, n is going to be the length of the list. And for i in range n, we're going to iterate through the whole list. And inside of that, of course, we have another loop. This is the basic bubble sort quadratic runtime algorithm. So for j in range, and this goes from zero to n minus i minus one. So depending on how much we already processed, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just plot the list. So we're going to say plt bar. So each stick is going to be one number at the respective position, we're going to pass x as the values here so that we have some ticks. And we're going to pass the list as the numbers. Um, and then we're just going to say plt pause, this is going to cause an animation. So 0.01, for example, just don't pick a too small number, because then you're going to see a white screen and nothing is going to happen. Um, and basically, what we're going to do then is we're going to clear the screen after every plotting so that we don't have all the bars at the same time. So that we're not overriding the previous plots, we're going to call a clear figure. So CLF. And once uh, this is done, we need to actually do the check. So if the item at position j is larger than the next item at j plus one, then we're going to swap these two numbers. So swap j and j plus one. So we're going to say j and j plus one is equal to j plus one and j. Again, we're not going to talk about the algorithm necessarily here itself, we're just going to uh, plot it. And once we're done, in the end, we want to call it plt dot show. So when I run this now, we should be able to see the sorting happening. As you can see, this is how bubble sort works. We can see that it takes always an individual stick compares it and then moves it to the right until it finds something that is larger Then it takes that moves it to the right. And after some while, it's going to have sorted the whole list. Now the animation is very slow, you can play around with the pause time. Um, but essentially, this is now done. And when it's done, it's going to just stay there and do nothing. It's just going to show you that. Now, of course, we can do that. Uh, let me first play around with this time here, maybe we can speed it up a little uh, a little bit. Um, yeah, a little bit, at least. So this is what you can do. And of course, you can do that with 10 values, you can do that with 100 values. So I can run this on 100. We're not going to wait for it to finish. But that is how you could do that. There you go. And of course, if you want to be creative, what you can do is you can also pass an array or a list with uh, different colors. So essentially, you could say, um, take the one that we're currently comparing and make make it red or something so that we always know what exactly it's moving. Uh, that is how you would visualize a simple bubble sort algorithm. Alright, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for a merge sort. What we're going to do here is we're going to copy the code because again, I'm not going to explain everything about the merge sort. I have a video where I go through all the individual lines of code. In this video, I just want to add 
uh, the animation stuff. So I'm going to copy the code that I already have in a video. So that is the code for a simple merge sort. You can see that we have the merge sort function itself. It splits the list up into left and right. Then uh, it calls itself recursively and then in the end it merges. So a merge sort takes a list, splits it, splits it, splits it until we have individual elements. Then it merges them together and the list is sorted. Again, I explained this in multiple videos in my algorithm course and uh, in the merge sort tutorial. So you can check that out if you want to. What we're going to do now is we're going to visualize that. So uh, we want to find positions where we can actually go ahead and add some animation. So one would be here before we start the recursive calls, we can just say PLT bar and we're going to pass list of range 20, depending on uh, the numbers here, we have 20 numbers. We can tweak that number again, we can create a variable amount and we can call it 20. For example, we can replace this by amount and we can replace this by amount. And I think we don't need anything else. So we're going to just plot here again. Those are the x values. And after the x values, we're going to also plot the number list itself, which is the parameter of the list. Then we're going to say plt dot pause again. 0, 0, 001 and then plt.clf. Now this happens before we start the recursive call. Once the recursive call is done, maybe you want to do it again. And then once the merging is done, so once we merge the split up lists again, for this particular iteration, keep in mind, this is recursive. Uh, so it's going to happen a lot of times. Uh, we want to also plot it again, I'm not even sure if that's necessary, we're going to see in a second if it works without it as well. Uh, and once we're done in the end, once everything is done, we want to also have the final result. So what we're going to do is we're going to print the numbers and afterwards we're going to say PLT bar, again, list range amount. And this time just numbers because we have the external variable, so not the parameter, we're outside of the function. And then PLT dot uh, show. So we're not going to do any animations here. And when we run that, you should see the process of a merge sort. You can see that uh, the typical thing is it takes uh, individual lists, sorts them, and then it merges them together. You can see the left part is already sorted, then the right part is sorted, and then they're merged together. So you can see now, there you go, it's merged together. Now, let me just see if I comment that out here. Was it that? If it's still going to work, because I don't know if things change that much. Actually, not this one, sorry, this one. Don't know if uh, if things changed that much, but I think they could. So let's see. Mm, looks actually kind of fine. Yeah. So you can see, this is how it works. Maybe we can speed up the animation by adding a zero here and by adding a zero here. And we can also increase the number amount to I don't know, 50 or something. And then when we run this, hopefully, we're going to be able to see the merge sort. Yeah, so it's going to take a while. Uh, it's not the, the fastest animation. I'm not even sure how we can speed that up. There's certainly some parameters that we can pass. But as you can see here, this part, this left part is sorted, then it's merged together with the right part that was sorted, but it still is just the left part of the whole thing. So we have sub lists, it's, uh, it's merging. Uh, it's splitting, it's merging, and so on. You can see this is sorted, this is sorted, now this is sorted, they're going to be merged together, and then the whole thing is merged together. And this is how you visualize sorting algorithms in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video, and 